All right, I'm ready to do a little bit more work on this guy and I'm gonna throw it up on the lift. All right, today I think I'm going to work on getting the chain guard on and the sprocket cover, which is actually on this side. So I'm gonna get the chain cover on and then the sprocket cover lays on top of the chain cover. So I'm gonna get this back to the right height and then get to work on it. So here is the chain cover that came with the bike. The gentleman that sold the bike to me said that he sent these out to get powder coated. For some reason he chose white for the red motorcycle. So I'm not sure why. Um, should be fine. The one thing that wasn't provided with this scooter when I bought it was all of the screws and everything that holds everything together. It came with most of them, but it's missing little odds and ends. Uh, like you previously saw with the nut that went on the swing arm, that was missing. And so I'm going to have to search through. It looks like one of the screws is here, and one of the screws is here. But it's missing. Oh, that's the. How does this work? Alright, so it's this screw is in place. It's missing that screw. It has that screw, and it's missing that screw. So I gotta see, go look through the screws that he provided and see what I got to work with. Alright, I think I have what I need here. Um, these are the correct screws um, for that this chain guard. This one is just going to be a whatever screw that I found that'll work because the short screws go in each one of these tabs. Here, here, and then down here is one. This one, the screw goes through the frame and and the uh, chain guard is actually threaded right here for it to go through and I didn't have anything long enough so I had this little guy it works I'm gonna go for that all right let's see how hard this is to get put on these pieces index with each other here and here There's a lot of stuff built up in it from the, I guess from the powder coating process or from, actually I bet you it's from sandblasting. There's a bunch of grit in here that I'm going to have to get out. Let's try that. I think I can see why people got rid of these after they took them off for the first time because they're so hard to get back together. Alright, that ought to work. Bugs me that there's so much of this sandblasting media inside here. Don't worry about me hurting myself, this thing is super dull. Like, super dull.
And this thing's all warped and everything. It's going to be fun to try to get together. All right. No time like the present. Should I put the top on first or the bottom? Side cover's got to come off. Seem to be bottoming out on something. I think it's the little backing nut on this sheet metal here. So Maybe if I come in, oh, it looks like that. There she goes. There's some serious warpage going on here. a little too forward. Oh, 
I don't know what would possess a guy to repaint a part that wasn't even a color that was offered by Honda. Alright, that was pretty bad, so now I'm a little concerned about how easily this is going to fit this piece. This little tongue here has to fit into the groove on this piece, and then this groove here fits over... You don't see it, but there's a, there's a lip on the underside of this uh, swing arm here. chain for a long time. So loosening up that top screw would help give me the wiggle room I need to get this one in. But. Doesn't seem like it. All right, I'm gonna fight with this off camera. All right, I got it all installed. I'm trying to show you, you can see all along here, there's just these dents like, I don't know if this thing had been mangled before that he repainted it or what, but one thing's for sure, if you sandblast something to prepare it for powder coat, Make sure you get all that grit out of all the crevices before you powder coat it, because it's everywhere. I mean, it's it's in here, in the welds. It was in the grooves where these interface. This was a little warped when I got it on and the chain was rubbing inside. Now I've got it so it's not hitting anything. And once I get it up to speed, we'll find out if it uh, if it's going to make any noise or scrape up against that uh, chain guard there. I know for a fact that I don't have both the screws to go in here, but I'm going to make sure that 
everything I have fits in place and then it's just a matter of going to the hardware store and getting the right screws. Here's the drive sprocket cover and just at first glance you think, wow, that thing must be brand new, but um, no, it's it's just been repainted. <laughs> so um, that sh that'll probably come off pretty quick. So that it overlaps the chain cover like that. Kind of holds everything together and then there's two screws, two screws, one here and one underneath here. It is hard to do this one-handed. Seems so out of place next to that old crusty one part, the old cover that's right next to it. Still not convinced that's the right screw for the job. I know on my blue one, these take these screws take an eight millimeter socket, and this one took a ten, and it seems to be uh, hitting the outsides of the indentation before it's hitting flush with the back side of the hole. So this might be a temporary solution at best. Don't want to forget one of the most important parts on the bike. The chain inspection plug. This part's always missing from these bikes. For the same reason that the chain cover is usually missing. It's so hard to get off, they don't put it back on, or they lose it once they get it off. Alright, I'm using this really sketchy setup here to get the scooter off of its front wheel because I have to pull this wheel off and I'm going to change the tire because this one's old. It'll make a good spare tire but I've got a tire over there that matches this tire which is brand new and it's really nice. It's a fat like 2.75 um, it's made by Hutchinson. You can really only find it in specialty places, but it's a good tire. Very grippy, and it's a lot fatter than these narrow ones that used to come on the bikes. So I feel more confident when I make, you know, I lean into turns and things like that. Alright, first there's a little cutter pin over here that holds the castle nut on. Undo my brakes. There we go, put all the pieces back on so I don't lose them. The speedometer on this one actually works. Um, I don't have a lot of luck with these Honda speedometers, so I'm afraid that if I take this apart, the speedometer may not work ever again. Cross our fingers here.
Yeah, here's the rim without the wheel. I went ahead and lubed up the bearing. Lubed up the moving parts of my brake system here. I'm getting ready to put my brand new tube in here and then the tire. Alright, I partially inflated the inner tube and I inserted it into the rim. Just gotta put this little securing nut on the stem here. Tighten that down. All right, I'll set you somewhere so you can watch me struggle to get this tire on. Hey, before I put that tire on, I think I'm going to go around with some Scotch-Brite and just knock down some of this rust that's built up on this rim. No chance of me ever re-chroming this guy. If I were to re-chrome it, I might as well just buy new because you have to unlace everything and then relace it and get the wheel trued back up and everything. So if I was going to go through all that trouble, I might as well just buy new rims because they'll need to be laced anyway. I guess I could do you a favor and show you kind of what it looks like right now as far as the rust is concerned once it comes into focus. So nothing serious, um, just surface rust that's kind of burned through the chrome a little bit. So my intention is just to get rid of that rust and shine it up a little bit. And I think the green scotch bright will do a good job. Here it is after a little bit of polishing with that scotch Bright. You know, nothing too phenomenal. I mean, there's still obviously some rust going on in there. But it gives it a little bit of shine. And that scotch Bright isn't really going to damage the chrome. It might scratch it a little bit, but it's suitable for the purpose of getting that rust off of the rims. I'm sure I'm doing this all wrong and you guys are screaming at the screen right now. And truth be told, I think I've only done this one time before and I don't and it was probably 18 years ago. So I don't remember how I did it. I probably struggled just as much then as I am now.
miraculously I've got it facing the same the right way as well. So that's oh, it's good. Get that guy back in there. this back down. Meet you guys at the other end. Okay, here we are back at the front end. <clears throat> now this groove has to interface with, I guess it's, oh right here there's a little lug on this arm. And that makes the speedometer gear spin in here. So I put that in. It actually helps me put this bike back together too, just a little bit. There's a castle nut on this side and a hole in the axle and then this little cotter pin goes through there and gets bent so that castle nut will never work its way off. Pretty good. And then there's a little spline inside the hub here and there's a corresponding groove in this, this spring that makes its way up to the speedometer and you just have to make sure you line those up when you put everything back together if it receives it it'll go all the way in and then you just crank this down one of the reasons I love these bikes is they're just so simple to take apart put back together I don't have experience with any other Japanese type brand motorcycle. I assume most if not all of them from this era were just this easy. My dad does have a Yamaha, or no I'm sorry, he's got a Kawasaki from like 1979 that I may end up working on because it needs a lot of work. first. Then this. There we go. Brakes are real easy to adjust. You just turn a little knob, this little knob here. And 
There we go. All right, that I think that wraps it up for tonight. Um, what do I have left? Well, I have a front rack that still needs to be installed that is out getting chromed right now. It's just this little bitty rack I can kind of show you here on the blue one. It's this little chrome rack here that the basket sits on and it's got these uh, little bars that come out and attach to the fork. So I need to get that rack on before I can put my reflectors on here. I've got a basket that I'll go on the front. What else? The exhaust, obviously, and there's a bracket that hangs the exhaust <clears throat> off to the swing arm pivot. And then the leg shield. And the only thing that'll be left after all that, I, little odds and ends, I gotta put the pin in the castle nut here. I got a, I gotta replace a tail light. Oh, and I do have to install the headlight. I'll make a separate video about that because it's gonna be a little involved. Um, because I'm using an aftermarket headlight that happens to, just happens to work with uh, these scooters. Um, and then after that I think I'm ready to go. Let's see, in the bucket of parts. He gave me a couple of new hand grips. Uh, the ones that are on there are good enough for now. If I get ambitious, I'll change them out someday. And in the future, there's lots of little things that I can do to tune it up. I do need to do an oil change because I don't know how old that oil is. Um, looks like that's working its way out. So, um, I do need to do the oil change before I go, but the hard part is going to be I, you know, finding all the missing pieces. I'm missing the nuts that hold on the the exhaust pipe and I'm missing uh, the screws that hold on the leg shield and then there's like a little bracket here and an acorn nut that um, would hold on part of the leg shield and there it's a special part and I'm gonna have to fabricate up something and then something that is way down the road is I'm missing a passenger foot peg and it's not something that you can just uh, bolt on because these were welded in place and you can see this one broke off so I'm gonna have to weld a new one on so that'll be an interesting job but that wraps it up for today um, go ahead and uh, give me your comments your opinions everything below I appreciate everybody watching this stuff, and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys next time.